Engineering is one of the most creative things I can think of, and Shraddha is absolutely one of the most creative, dynamic, exciting people I know. So please welcome her. A big round of applause for our wonderful rock star, Shraddha. Thank you so much, Kate. This is amazing. I am so lucky and so happy to be here. Um, how is the day going for all of you? Yes, love it. Okay, good. So I wanted to start off by introducing my name, my name, of course, and myself. My name is Shraddha. At Cisco, I work at Cisco Systems, and instead of calling it Cisco, I call it the amazing Cisco. Um, I am a green engineer and a machine engineer. Yes, these are words and titles I've made up on my own to show the creative side of being an engineer. Um, and as you can tell, today's date is not May 10th. It's Mother's Day 2015. All right, yay mothers. So that's me when I was uh, probably four or five years old, something like that, when I was in New York. But I want to start off by telling you about these two people here. This, on, the, on this side, what is this side? My left hand side. It's my mother, happy, jolly, yellow. She, that's her favorite color. She thinks it's the color of intelligence. And this is my father. He's, a, he's quite a character. You know, here he's, he's very proud of me working at Cisco. So he wears my Cisco dad shirt and every shirt that I've ever got from Cisco, he wears it. <laughs> So let me start off with the beginning. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Today, my very first landlord is joining us. My landlord right there, my mother. I stayed in her belly for nine months, <laughs> rent free, free housing, free food, luxurious travel all over India with my father and my brother and my sister, all accommodations covered. I was born in Adepur, India. Um, it's the northwestern part of India in 1984, so I am 30 years old. And I moved to New York uh, when I was four years old in 1988 with my parents, my older brother, and my older sister, and then finally to California in 1990. So I've been a California girl most of my life. This is my mom again. And uh, this is me. For some reason, I don't know what it is, I always put my hand up in the air. I am so proud all the time that I'm always raising my hand up, and you're going to see that in the photos. So I call my mom a mathematical wizard because she is a mathematical wizard. When I was three years old, she taught me my timetables. Three years old. So I would, I would sit at home and be like, two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three, on and on. And that was my mom's thing, my mom's doing. So I love patterns. I love, I love looking at numbers and figuring things out. Just like this. Did you all know that today starts 10 days of a palindromic day? Look at that. You have 5, 10, 15. Does anybody know what palindromes are? Yeah, right? When you can, anybody want to raise their hand and tell me what it is? Yes. There you go. You can read it backwards and forwards. Yes. Never what? Hold on. There's a mic coming your way. Never odd or even is one palindrome. Wow. Never. Amazing. I love palindromes. Mom is a pal palindrome. Did you, you know, did you guys know that? Mom. Wow, mom. Wow, mom. Right? Okay. <laughs> And this is my father, okay? I've always been my dad's little girl. Like I said, I have an older brother and sister. And I, my, my father is an engineer, and he's sitting right over there, too, right next to my mom. Can you wave? Hi, there he is. Woohoo! So when I was five years old, I started taking things apart. Now, I know moms, you may not like this because sometimes you have things that are working and they will take it apart. Just let them do it. You can go, you can go get another one or have them make something amazing. So I started taking things apart. And to this day, I take things apart. This is an old phone from Cisco that was destined for the electronic waste bin. It was going to go into, it was going to get recycled. But I took it apart because you can take a look at everything that is in there. And it's amazing, the things that you can learn from it. So I encourage a lot of people, young young kids and adults to take things apart because you learn a lot from it. Um, my father and I always work on exciting projects together. So in our backyard, we've had um, a garden that's been growing for about 13 years now, and my dad has cultivated it like crazy. We have sugarcane, we have papaya, we have every single fruit you could imagine that you wonder, how does that grow in Southern California? So, we, so my dad bought a sugarcane juicer, and it didn't work. So for the last... Well, this was a few years ago. All we did was we went and fixed, we fixed the sugarcane juicer. It was a lot of fun. And then there, there's the result of it. We had sweet, sweet sugarcane juice. And my dad actually has parties at home where my, my siblings' friends come over and they have sugarcane juice parties. 
Look what this is. I'm putting my hand up again. This is when we went to the Statue of Liberty. And I have a whole album where all I'm doing is sticking my hand up in the air. I don't know why. And those are my, my two amazing siblings, my older brother and then my older sister. And they're kind of, they're, they're kind of a replicate of my, my mom and dad. So I, it's like I have two sets of parents. So who is Shraddha? I want to start off by telling you, I've had to describe myself in a few words, and um, I'm very jolly, I'm really carefree, um, and I love being playful. I think life is all about being playful and having fun. Sometimes I'm enthusiastic, as you can already tell, and once I had to write up something about um, who am I, and I didn't write words, I wrote descriptions. I mean, I wrote uh, photos, I put, I put drawings in there. Smiley, I, maybe you can't see from back there, but it's all the things that I think that I want to be. And so what I I want to tell you with this is you have to be your authentic self. I know you guys are in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and it's going to be difficult as you get older because you're going to want to do what somebody else is doing. But be yourself. You are going to love who you are, and it took me a while to figure that out as well. So, like I said, love timetables, love fixing things, taking them apart, making something else out of it. And here is actually something that when I was here at the Computer History Museum a, f a couple months ago, I had a workshop with kids, and they took, um, this is a solar uh, light path, or solar, what is it, like a solar pathway light that you have in your garden. They took it apart, and they took an old Cisco phone, so they made a cone out of it, I mean a cane out of it. They made a little gavel out of it, and you know, people have been, Banging it so much, it kind of broke. So now it's time to make it into something else, right? Um, I went to UC San Diego, University of California, San Diego, with the beautiful beaches and an amazing engineering program. I graduated with a degree, in, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and a depth in machine intelligence, which means that I got to make machines smart and recognize things. Um, but that was seven years ago, and for seven years I've rarely even used my machine intelligence until now, until the job I have right now. So I, I joined Cisco as an intern in 2007, and then I became a full-time engineer at Cisco in 2008, March 2008. I love Cisco. I know there's amazing companies here in the Valley, but I think Cisco is pretty amazing. We have so much potential. We are reinventing ourselves over and over, so I hope that you all one day come work where, uh, come over to Cisco. It's a great place. And also, I don't know if you guys know this, but you know my initials, Shraddha Chaploth, SC? It's right there. It's in the name. It was meant to be. I have been there 371 weeks, okay, so I can't, I love numbers, right, so 371 weeks, seven, seven years. Um, oops, oh, ooh, you weren't supposed to see that yet. Okay, um, I have been a, a part of five teams in seven years. I've been a part of the accessibility team, energy efficiency, green, cloud, um, corporate social responsibility. I mean, these are all words that you will either hear or eventually know what they are. But let me start off by telling you something. I love having fun. This is a lab. When you think about labs, do you think about people in straight coats and sitting in a corner? Yes? Well, that does happen sometimes. I do that too. But I also do this. I, I'm pretending this vacuum cleaner is a rocket. All right? I'm just hanging out there. I'm cleaning and I'm pretending it's a rocket. I, but sometimes we, we also have cubes, okay? So I love decorating my cubes with all these toys. People would always come to my cube and play with the toys. And then we do a lot of philanthropy and volunteering. And this is me when we installed um, solar panels for one of these homes uh, that was a low-income home, and we installed so solar panels all day long. And I was on the roof on top of the world. That's how I felt, even though I was only on the second story. But it's okay. Okay, so the first job that I had was in accessibility. I had no idea what accessibility was. Does anybody know what accessibility is? Back there, yeah, you wanna tell me? It's when you make things for people who are deaf or blind so they can use your product. Exactly. So I didn't know about that, but every product that we have at Cisco, you look at how it can be accessible for anybody and everybody. It doesn't matter who. If you're deaf, you're blind, whatever it is. So I was a part of the accessibility team. And I actually brought on the first two interns who were deaf to Cisco. Now, it's just a different language when you think about it. Does anybody know sign language here? Yeah? What do you know? I know the alphabet and a bunch of different words. Oh, that's great. When did you learn? At school. At school? Okay. I learned, I learned the alphabet when I was in second grade, and I learned Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when I was in third grade. And the whole time, I was doing wonder like this, 
and this actually means I'm crazy. So my whole life, I'd been doing I'm crazy, and then Kelly and Samuel, my two interns, were the ones who told me I was doing it wrong. So it's kind of important. And they're signing out C-I-S-C-O, Cisco. So I tested a lot of our products for accessibility features, and if you all look at your table, do you see a card in front of you? Right? Did you feel, did you feel my card? Does anybody know what that is? Braille, right? So this is a card for someone who cannot see what my card has printed on there. So we think about those kinds of things. Oh, I already had you do that. All right, the next thing I did was I went to energy efficiency. So when you think about our environment, we have a lot to do. And it's so exciting because there's so much technology involved, so much learning involved. So I call myself a green engineer, a green engineer. I could have been a hardware engineer, but I called myself a green engineer. And what a green engineer is, is an engineer, but somebody who's very creative, somebody who takes thing and, things and doesn't look at it the normal way. So when I look at products that I take apart, I am looking at how it's going to be recycled. I'm looking at how it's designed. I'm looking at what else I can make out of it, because you are going to recycle those products. You're going to make something else from it. Um, also, that's a cupcake, so I had to put that in there. <laughs> Now these photos, please, you know, disregard the filter. I had an old phone then and it looks really bad, but these, these are old photos from like four years ago or something. But here I was setting up different types of, um, it's memory. So each type of product that we would test, we would have different types of specifications we needed. So I, would, I felt like I was in an assembly line and I've always wanted to be in an assembly line. You know, like um, chocolate, that would be the best one. You eat one, you put one away, you eat one, you put one away, right? But I was doing this. Um, and then we also had chambers, because we were testing how well these products would work in extreme temperatures. So again, we have a chamber. I'm taking out this little device right here, takes out the central processing unit, the CPU, because you can't touch it with your hand, because it might bend a pin, and then you've just wasted so, mu so much money, right? So there's a little device. You learn so much on the job. And then this one is our energy efficiency demo. So I actually had an amazing opportunity to be a manager for three interns um, a few years ago. And our project was to make energy efficiency look cool and understandable by people who did not know what energy efficiency was. So what we did is I had the interns design, build, code. Oh, wait, does that sound familiar? Yes. I'm sorry, design, code, build. But yes, that sounds familiar, right? So that's what they did for three months. They looked at all of these screens. They looked at what they could design. This is a touch screen right here. Um, this is a screen that shows the efficiency of two of our products, an old product, and then the new product, the new enhanced energy efficient product. And then these are my eels. I made the mascots, right? Eels because it's energy efficiency lab. So they're my electric eels, right? You got to have fun whatever you're doing, always. Um, and then this was one of my interns, and we had it showcased at one of our big Cisco events. Um, it was amazing. Everybody wanted to come and, and play with it. It made sounds. It had, um, it had lights that were going around every time that packets, or every time that um, you saw the packets being sent or the data or information being sent from, from the product. And then I moved over to corporate social responsibility. How many of you volunteer? Yeah? Where do you volunteer? Where do you volunteer? Uh, right now, the school, Boys and Girls Club, Little League. Wonderful. Great, great. Anybody else? Any of the kids? Where do you kids volunteer? Not yet? OK. You're going you're gonna to be doing it. You're going to love it, because you're going to be able to help out with what you're passionate about. So now I call myself machine engineer. Right? I went from green engineer, and I'm like, what am I going to do now? Green engineer. I mean, machine engineer. Wow. Um, so here is what I love about my job, which I've been in for almost a little over four months. I love my job because it is my dream job. I feel like my manager right now, his manager and the VP, looked at me for a whole year and said, Shraddha, you like to do this and this and this for fun, and you like to go to these things, and you like to make this stuff. Let's just give you a job and pay you for it. And that's what they did. This is what I do. I get to build things. I get to make things. I get to try things out. I, like I said, building. I'm an engineer. I, I test things out. I see how to teach people certain things um, related to engineering engineering, like soldering, putting things together, raspberry pies like you guys are doing or will be doing, um, creating. I'm, I get to be very creative in my role, educating because the program that we're coming up with is about education. It's about playing. Like I said, if it's not got playing, I'm not going to do it. It's all about playing. Helping people. That's, I love helping people. I think, I think we all have that within us to help other people out. We work with such a diverse group of people, age, gender, uh, ethnicity, 
abilities, everything. So it's a great environment. It has a startup mentality. And I'll tell you the difference between a startup mentality and a company. Startup mentality is you get to do a bunch of different things. They, they enable you to do these things. And then if, you, if it doesn't work out, you try to do something else. And this is the beauty about Cisco. We have that startup mentality, even though we have 70,000 plus people. And it's a great culture. It's a great culture. Um, people are wonderful there. And you meet somebody new every single day. All about having fun. So one day, my boss gives me a box of this stuff. Has anyone ever heard of Make? Maker Fair, right? Make and Maker Fair and the entire maker movement is to make each and every single one of you an inventor, an innovator, to take your dreams and make you into anything that you want, OK? If, it doesn't matter if you're an artist or if you are a theatrical thespian person. Everything has to do with technology no matter what. So I got, I got to play with this stuff. So I've been playing with it for about a month now. Um, so right, I told you I've been a part of five teams. I've gone from green engineer to machine engineer, and I'm still a green engineer. I am a huge advocate of STEAM, which combines STEM with the arts, and showing that being smart is cool. Because I'll tell you, when I was in middle school and high school, smart was not cool. I was smart. I was always on the top of my math classes, but people made fun of me because they maybe didn't understand something, and that made them want to not have other people feel good. So I stopped. I tried stopping to be kind of smart. Okay? Okay? That wasn't a good idea. But now that's what I do. I, I show people that smart is cool. So things I love to do, pastimes, passions, pondering, that's what my job is. It's all about, it's, it's all about playing. So here are some components that I had left over, and I made a little caterpillar out of it, right? You see things, you make things. The next segment, basically, is I want to show you my, myself. This is what I do. Everything is incorporated together in what I do. I don't separate work, work shraddha and personal shraddha. So for my work, my boss was like, hey, I need you to teach a class when we do our thing uh, later on this September. I need you to teach a class on four different types of materials, um, metal, uh, plastics, wood, and textiles, OK? So I took a shop at this place called Tech Shop, where you get to go use their machines. You pay them a small amount, and you get to use their machines. So here is a piece of metal. I, it was a two-hour class, and I made a bottle opener just after Two hours, I learned how to use equipment, and I made a bottle opener. I had never done this before. I wish I had when I was in college or high school, and I never did. You guys can do this. OK, now this is something else, because let me ask you something. How many of you know Vogue? How many of you have heard of Vogue, the magazine? Anybody? Right? No? OK. So Vogue is a, is a fashion magazine. Um, it, it always has you know, uh, clothes and, and makeup and, and fashion and all of that stuff. So it's really surprising, because the three things you would never expect in Vogue would be an engineer, Cisco, and me. Right? You would never expect any of us to be in Vogue, because it's a fashion magazine. And yet, here we are, because smart is cool. So just. In March this year, I was actually in Vogue India. Can you believe that? As a valley girl. As a Silicon Valley girl. Right? Thank you. Thank you. But this isn't, it's, it's not just about me. It's to show you that smart is cool. And when they asked me in December, let me just tell you, they sent me an email and said, we need you to meet us at a hotel on Friday. And I thought they were kidnapping me. Because who in the world would think that Vogue would want an engineer in their magazine? Yet they're understanding how, how beautiful being smart is. So this is, they actually, I, I look very tall, don't I? I'm really short. It's, it's all the angle. They dressed me up. They did my makeup. They did my hair. We went to San Francisco Golden Gate, uh, Golden Gate Bridge. But I want to tell you something. They let me wear my shoes. They liked my shoes. They're Vogue-approved shoes. <laughs> OK, other things. You can make things. Oh, five minutes. OK, you can make things out of any. Oh, oh gotcha. <laughs> I, you know, because I can keep talking forever, and I have a lot of photos to show you guys, so I want to be sure that we have time for questions and everything. Um, I love making things. This is recycled. This is a This is a can. I mean, a, a bottle. This is a top of a soda. Um, these are holes that I drilled. This is saran wrap tape. And when you combine that with a vacuum cleaner, when you combine that with a heat gun, you can make molds like this. Those, those molds right there, you can take whatever shape you want. What I want to tell you is that you can make anything. You, all you have to do is go online, look at stuff. You can try experiments out at home. It's really easy to make things. In fact, I made this out of, um, you know those tongue depressors that doctors have or like those sticks and then rubber bands? 
It's a harmonica. That's it. You can make anything out of things you've never made things out of. I also like to do pranks on my, my lab mates, right? So one time this guy was gone and um, he loves this place completely clean. Like everything is 90 degrees. So I put post-its all over, right? And then they came and they put bubble wrap all over my stuff. I love doing pranks. Um, we also have this uh, astro astronomical society within Cisco. We have so much stuff there. And so um, when, I think it was a solar eclipse that was happening and they all, all the people who had their um, telescopes brought it out and we got to look at it. So I was looking at, you know, obviously in a safe way, looking at the sun. I love pie. Who loves pie? To eat and to count. Do you know pie? Who knows pie? What the, the value is? Right over there. Mm -hmm. 3.14, exactly. So, for example, this is a calendar and I put 3, 14, 15, 9, 26, 5, right? And then at work we have these hedges and it's, it looks really small but they look like pie. And then this is really weird, but I did this. I was waiting for my odometer on my car to turn to a specific number, and I, I matched it so that it was actually all those pi numbers, and that was exactly the part that it reached. I like numbers. You can blame my mom right there. She's right there. I'm very empowered by Cisco. Like I said, I've been there seven years, and every time people talk to me, they wonder, how have you stayed at the same job for seven years? It's because I love it, I'm empowered, I'm enabled, and there's always fun stuff to do. I'm a creator of opportunities, having fun, and there is no bound to the imagination. Oh, and this is a photo that we had, because I wanted to show that being smart is cool, okay? Because we have to break stereotypes all the time. Um, and I'm empowered by Cisco. Okay, now I want to show you guys some really cool stuff because like I love fashion, I love doing my nails, I love doing a lot of stuff. I love geometric shapes, right? So I'm always, my, you can always recognize me by my nails. Um, if I were to go missing, if you found my hand, you'd know it was me. <laughs> I love braiding hair. Ever since I was a kid, all of my girl cousins would line up and uh, my uncle actually wanted to start a hair salon with me because I love braiding people's hairs. Hair. Um, I love going and exploring San Francisco. I love, live up in San Francisco, and I call this Chucks on Tour. So it's all my Chucks. Yeah, one city, one Chuck. You can always tell that's me. Um, I am learning to fly. I have a friend who's a pilot. I'm not that great, but I love being up in the air. I'm learning archery. Not that great, but I want to try it out. So try things out. You don't have to be good at it. I'm not good at anything, actually. I just like trying things out. Um, at Cisco, we do a lot of philanthropy, and so or a lot of reaching out and getting girls and boys and people who are not who are not aware of what STEM is. What you guys are experiencing today, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. So we bring a lot of people to our company, um, and these are just some uh, photos of the people that we've had. And I always like being goofy and silly, so you'll always see that I paint just like you saw my arm before. I paint what the girls want, who they are: engineer, engineer, doctor, visual arts person, whatever it is, whatever you want to be, be empowered, do it. And then this was, I was an MC for one of the events and I had all the girls raise their hands and they're so proud. Um, I also like to draw. I never know what I'm drawing. I just end up drawing and then somehow I connect something and it ends up being something else. So these are some things that I've drawn. I, I, if you tell me to draw like a person right now, I would not be able to do it. But somehow this comes up. So really experience yourself. Like try to realize what you enjoy doing. Um, just more pictures. And I love nerdy jokes. I love nerdy jokes, coming up with them. So instead of giving regular hugs, I like giving people brain hugs. So you can see this is, um, this is one of my neurons in my brain. And the, and the dendrites are like huggable dendrites, right? So this is like a brain hug. Again, you know, nail polish coming off, so I made a little thing on my hand. Um, it's an orange. Orange, you guys gonna laugh at this? <laughs> Isn't it appealing? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so now let me, really quickly, um, let me tell you a little bit about this. So my mom has always talked about, uh, you know, if you see something that's not working right, you wanna go and make a change. So I always say, don't complain, make a change. This is a book that I had when I was in college, or it was starting to be a book. And I noticed that there were a lot of problems with it, so I went to the professor and I told him as he was writing about it. So a couple of years later, after I had worked with him on editing it, my name actually appears on page XVII. Yeah, when I was like 20 years old, I got my name printed in a calculus book, and hopefully you guys will all be in college and be using this book. And when you turn to that page, you'll see my name, which I think is amazing because I love math. I am an absolute lover of math. So, 
Oh, thank you. So don't complain, make a change. Um, from mistake to magic, okay? Sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes things happen, how do you make it better? So I got a cut on my hand, right? You see the cut on the hand? But I didn't think it was a cut, I thought it was a cute little face. One time I was eating a grape and it was the ugliest grape ever because it had like a little um, bruise on it and a, a rip on the, on the grape, so you know what I did? I made it into a T-Rex and said, feed me. Do you see that right there? It's got that eye and that mouth. I don't want to throw it away. So what I'm saying is take those mistakes that you see every day in what you do and make that into magic. Make that into something amazing because you can always change things around. It's all about per perspective. This is it. I play with my food a lot too. Sorry, mom. Um, and so it could be an upside down, really sad, grumpy face or it could be something really happy. So it's just about your perspective. Be curious. Yes, this happened. How many of you have had like 309 tabs open? Anybody? Yeah, right? Right? Who, who, yeah, exactly. Well, I've had that many open all the time. So be curious. Maybe not that curious, but be curious. Um, this is my phone number at work, 5280. Who knows what 5280 is? Who, where are my math people? 5,280 feet. Yes. Feet, yes. So I always say, Cisco set me up seven years ago to always go the extra mile, <laughs> right? I'm serious, this is my phone number, you guys can call me. Find people who inspire you. Obviously you know that those two people over there inspire me, and the kids they've had, my brother and my sister, inspire me. The third person, well the fifth person, that inspires me a lot is my CEO. For seven years, he has been my CEO and he just retired on Monday, which, which makes me really sad, I'm still in mourning. Um, but he retired, this is John Chambers, he's, He's been a 20-year-old 20 20 year CEO of Cisco, and his birthday was before mine, a day before mine. So we have a very close bond. Um, he always takes great pictures. This is my test to see if someone's cool, if they're willing to take cool pictures. And this was on Monday. The guy on the right, Chuck Robbins, is our new CEO, and I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be just as wonderful as John. So find people who inspire you. So this is my thing from me to you. Don't complain, make a change. Be curious about things. Take mistakes, make it into uh, magic. Find things that you love to do and see if, they, if you want to make them your passion. Because you can, there's no bound. Take things that are trash and make them into treasure. It's amazing what you can do with it. Um, just like this, right? This box that I made. And don't lose yourself. You have to embrace who you are. It's going to be hard, but you got to do it. And I promise you, you're going to love it. So now, I wanna, really quickly, I want to tell you about future jobs, right? I, I, I think the jobs we have right now, like I've said, hardware engineer and computer scientist, those are great, but let's change the names a bit, right? Curious engineer, that's my dad, right? Experiments and everything. Mathematical wizard, that's my mom, magic with numbers. Green engineer, that's me, making things more efficient, recycling, blah, 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 you, reusing of materials. Machine engineers, making machines intelligent. Solar explorer, how about that, huh? How close can you get to the sun? Make it whatever you want it to be. Intergalactic engineer, I promise you that's going to be my next role. Going through different galaxies, right? Hypnotic roboticist, how do you trick robots, robots when they're trying to tr take over, right? Because how many of you are scared of robots? Anybody? Taking over? No? Good, you guys are all going to embrace this. I'll tell you, my colleagues, some of them are scared. Um, okay, this one I came up with last night, Corologist, studying the crust of the Earth, and, and an Oreos expert, because it has, you know, it has O-R-E-O -E in there. I don't know. Make up whatever you want. This is, this is about you. Make up what you want to do. Lunar tuner, I don't know, I came up with that because I thought it was cute. What do you guys think? Any ideas? Okay, think about that too. If you have any others, think about that. So, I want to, I'm not ending, okay? I want to take questions and then I have something else that I want you to do. So first, let me, let me hear questions from you guys. What questions do you have? All right, this is a great opportunity. So if any of you have anything you want to ask Shraddha, she will probably answer you, <laughs> honestly. And, and if she, I don't know it? She is incredibly interesting, as you see. So are there any questions? Is there anything anyone wants to ask? Any questions? Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for doing this today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, how do you, do you have any suggestions for all of us when we're learning something and it's tedious and boring and it's just that awful part to get to the reward, like what we can do to stay engaged mm -hmm. to get to the reward? Sure. So how do you stay engaged in something that you really don't want to do? And that happens quite a lot with me because I really like cooking or cleaning and my mom really tries to encourage me to do all of those things. Um, I think you have to look at 
what the other things are that you want to have done that, that can be enabled once you finish these things. Because I have some amazing ideas and some amazing things I want to do. And if I look at that end goal, then I can say, OK, I have to clean my place. I have to do what I need to do. But I don't think I'm that great at it, because I, I, I'm not that great at it. I wish I could, I could tell you. Sorry. All right, yeah. any other questions on the other side of the room? Did I answer all your Oh, right over there. I thought I answered. There's a microphone coming oh. your way. <laughs> uh, so the world is changing so fast, and uh, careers that were there maybe five years ago mm -hmm. may not be around, or, or uh, they, they weren't uh, around five years ago, and you see new uh, jobs coming up, right. new career paths. So how do these kids learn so that they're ready to, in maybe five, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years, the whole world is changing? How do they learn sure. so they are ready to take that on? Sure. So the most important thing to do about keeping up with the change that's happening, you're right, careers are changing, and they're changing faster than they've ever changed before. I mean, a lot of things are being replaced with automation. So what you kids need to do, and even for, for the moms, you need to stay as relevant as you can with learning. So you don't have to stay relevant with the things that are happening, because there's just way too much stuff. Way too many apps, way too many products to use, way too much information. I mean, information overload. You just need to be consistent in, in the learning aspect, because you can find the things that you love to do and go focus on those things, because there are so many people Everyone's going to be working on things. Try to, try to focus on knowing how to be a good learner, and that's going to keep you relevant. So learning different types of skills. Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, Shara. Uh, so I'm also the volunteer today, and I'm also doing an internship in Cisco right now. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so nice to see you. And I think your uh, speech is really inspiring. Uh, and uh, the question that I want to ask is that um, how do you usually spend your pastime? Because I can feel like that you love your uh, job very much. And I think maybe in your spare time, you're also trying to explore all kinds mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Um, Sure. I'm yeah. Curious. So, so I, I completely get you, and I think a lot of people ask me this: How do you do so much, and how do you, um, how do you get to do all the fun stuff? I'm lucky right now that I have a job that actually lets me c combine my work and my life because I do think they're connected. But I can see that sometimes, you know, you're working a lot and you have other stuff that you want to do, you will need to make time for that. And that has to be something that's incorporated into your work a little bit. Um, I, there's, just, there's just so much fun stuff to do. You, and I know I don't, have a, you know I don't have a family, I don't have kids, I don't have any of that, and I understand that takes a lot of time. So um, try to get help from other people too. It's been very hard for me to ask people to help me, because I don't have it all together at all. I, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do and take care of. Ask other people to help you because you'll be surprised how much other people can help. If you're a parent and you, know, you, you want to go do something and you have a parent friend, ask them to watch your kid for a little bit and see what you can do. Um, but it's not easy. It's not easy to, to do this. But y y you have to know that whatever you're passionate about, you should go for it. You should try it out. And sometimes just try to see if you can incorporate that into your work. Because more often than not, at Cisco, where we're combined, we're, we're a part of everything, you can combine it with your work. OK? Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions, folks? Any other questions? All right. Are we All good? Right. So I have one question, I sure. guess. Um, you've talked so much about how, how the students in the room can move forward and all the things they can do. If you had to give them one piece of advice, what's your one takeaway that you want them to go home with today? I want you to remember to never forget who you are and to know that you're always continuously going to be growing and experiencing things. And when you lose yourself, that's when you lose your passion. That's when you lose what you want to do. So don't ever forget who you are. And I'm going to add one more to that. Be playful. Life is about having fun. It's not, I got to go to work. You spend one third of your life working at least. You don't want to, you don't want to just waste that time. You want to somehow make it fun and exciting. A lot of the things I've done, um, Normally would not seem fun, but I made them fun. Who has, who has electric eels and mascots in a lab? You know, all of my lab mates had been working there for 20 years, and they never, they never experienced that, and they became kids again. And I think we all have kids within us, so really unleash that and, and remain true to yourself. Yeah? Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank Big you. round of applause for Shada, everybody. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think this is so amazing that I was asked here today on, on a Mother's Day special. So we have a little surprise. And um, kids, are you ready? So what I did before the kids, uh, you know, when we separated you guys, is I told the kids that they are going to hand a carnation. Did I brief you on this? Were you in there? Yeah. Yeah, you guys were, right? Yeah. You're going to hand a carnation to your mom and tell her one thing you love about her. <laughs> and we're all going to hear it. Go ahead. Thank you for helping me, providing a home and food for me. Thank you so much. And helping. Wonderful. So what I love about my mom is that she never gives up and she's always doing something for me to help me. And she helps me every single day my whole life. Thank you. What I love about my mom is that she, she always does what's best for me and she's really inspiring. What I love about my mom is that she always cares about me, um, no matter what. So, here you go. What I love about my mom is that she makes me lunch. <laughs> What I love about my mom is that even though what kind of obstacles we're going through in life, she's always there to help the family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I love about my mom is she cares about me and she always wants the best for me. What I love about my mom is that she has the most off-the-wall humor ever. <laughs> and she's also really patient with me. What I love about my mom and that is that she's really supporting for me. Um, what I love about my mom, what I love about my mom is that she knows how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and she's always there for me. <laughs> what I love about my mom is she helps me in every possible way. So I love my mom's pretty much overall complete awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's been said, uh, I like my mom's amazing cooking ability. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing I love about my mom is that she always encourages me to do things that I never thought I'd be able to do. One thing I love about my mom is that she always supports me, and even if I don't want to do something, she still does makes me do it. Even if. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're out of time, so I'm just gonna cut through this. Mothers, you're amazing. Uh, keep your children's things; they're gonna love it. Like this, when I was 11 years old, I wrote no siblings ever. I wanted to be an only child. <laughs> right? So keep all the things your kids have. You're amazing. Don't ever think that what you're doing is not enough because it means a lot to them. So, I will leave you with this. This is my brother, my sister, and I giving my mom a present. Thank you. Thank you, mothers.